So I just wanted to do a quick video. I was going to send this um, cassette out. Somebody bought it online. So I was just about to uh, wrap it up and send it. Um, I just wanted to talk about all the spacers. They're pretty straightforward. Uh, but I just remember when I started doing this, I was a little bit confused by them. So you might receive stuff and it might not come. Or if you buy something used, it might not come uh, pre-built. So you buy a used cassette, it might just turn up in kind of weird packaging and whatnot. Um, so all you want to do is basically space the sprockets out so that they all end up with the same kind of distance between them. So yeah, we here we go. So you can see that distance there. So you just want to uh, emulate that on all the others. As you can see on this one, which is a, it's called a spider, this metal part. So when you buy a bit of a higher end cassette, I think this is a PG30. So it's kind of the equivalent of a SLX or an XT on Shimano, but it's a SRAM version. And um, they will come with a spider. And I think if you go for the even higher ones, they'll have like three chain rings on here. Um, but you can see in the middle it's actually raised. So they've put a small kind of spacer there. It's not a full spacer. And in this kit here, all this comes with the... This basically comes with a cassette originally. These are all the, all the spacers. And you can just see that this kind of metal one is uh, maybe a little bit thinner. It's not as thick as the plastic ones hard to pick that up on the camera but that means that 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 metal one will go onto there like so and then what you can do is get the next biggest chain ring and if you've got build the cassette normally where you have um, the numbers on the edge so it says 28 tooth that side faces outwards so that's the way that goes on but now you can see on this chain ring it's totally flat so there's no inbuilt spacer, so therefore you're going to need to add one of the spacers that they supply you with. And you basically just keep doing that until you've built the cassette up. Um, it does change once you get to the top of the cassette. Obviously you'll be putting this onto your free hub, so you'll be um, that will be holding it together for you. So yeah, that one wants to go there. Basically just adding these spaces means that you've got an equal amount of space between each tooth which is going to help you uh, shift evenly. So that one's flat so we need a spacer on there. And like I said once you get to the top of the cassette the final two rings normally are a little bit different. So yeah right now we've run out of spacers but when we put this one on you can see it's flat. It doesn't have an inbuilt spacer but if you look at the next two um, sprockets for the cassette cogs I don't know the proper name for them but yeah if you look at these two you can see they've got a spacer built onto them so we don't actually need to run um, a plastic spacer that's just going to sit on there and then your final one was actually kind of a groove on the inside so it sits kind of inside of there and then you put your lock ring on and tighten that to 40 newton meters um, and ultimately that should we can hold it all together that will give you your space needed so yeah it's just a quick one some people might get confused with that 